following program is a presentation of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio in iTunes. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market. From unusual activity alerts to market updates and trading strategies. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. Break it down. It's time to hit the option block. With your host, Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com. And co-hosts, Mike Tussaw from knowyouroptionsinc.com. And Mark Sebastian from optionpit.com. The Option Block is brought to you by Options Express. Don't spend time worrying about your broker. At Options Express, security, stability, and account protection are the most important responsibilities to our customers. Secure account access, enhanced financial protection, entrusted with over $7 billion in customer assets, established financial stability. Options Express lets you trade with confidence. Stocks, options, and futures, all in one account. Trade with a specialist. Visit optionsexpress.com slash OX radio to open your free account. Options Express is a member of FINRA, SIPC, and NFA. Welcome back to the Option Block, your bi-weekly source for options news and information and analysis and trading tips and techniques and strategies and stuff. all sorts of fun stuff, exactly. <laughs> My name is Mark Longo from the optionsinsider.com as well as the old Options Insider Radio Network. And it was another scintillating day on the old street today. So scintillating, in fact, that I'm joined by many members of the old all-star panel to help me make sense of it, starting with the rock lobster himself, beaming in all the way from Maine, Andrew Giovanazzi from OptionPit.com. Andrew, welcome back to the show. Thank you, thank you. I, again, I had trouble uh, going to the property and kicking all the lobsters and clams off of our front porch. It was very, uh, it, that's mostly where I spent my day today because the market was so exciting, that's all I had to do. You know, these, these first world problems of you Mainers, really, uh, they're really, I play the violin, the violin for you, sir. It tugs my heartstrings. Exactly. You got to go down and you want to go grab some clams for dinner. So you just, you know, you grab your rake, you go down, you pick up your clams out of the mud, you wash them off and you steam them up. <laughs> you can't get too much tougher than that. <laughs> Speaking of digging in the mud, we are also joined by the man from the mountains himself, making a very rare twice-in-one-week appearance, good old Uncle Mike Tussaw from Know Your Options, Inc. Uncle Mike, welcome back to the show, sir. Always a pleasure to be here. Uh, don't have any steamed clam stories to talk about, but I guess if I was walking through downtown Chicago, maybe I could dodge bullets on a day like this. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, Chicago not exactly getting too much love in the national media these days. And the rightfully over. rightfully so for the most part. We have unions tearing apart the city pretty much and shutting down streets. We have rampant gang violence. Most of it's on the south side. That's not really reported that much in the national media. You just see the headlines of, you know, oh, uh, Chicago more deaths than Afghanistan this month and things like that that are all sorts of fantastic headlines and make people call you up saying, why are you living in Chicago and why are you raising a, uh, a young son in downtown Chicago? Are you completely insane? So Because yeah. that's where the options are, baby. Exactly. That is, this is still the Mecca. That is where the options trade. Yes, this is both the Mecca of horrible violence and union strife and also options. So we we take one of those three and we hold the other two with a bit of a grain of salt. But yes, interesting times to be in Chicago these days. Speaking of being in Chicago, I'm also joined by another local fellow, good old Sean Fitzgerald from Options Express. Sean, welcome back to the show, sir. Always a pleasure as well. Um, I did not have any clams to kick off my front lawn this morning. However, on the way to work, I did see a few deer hanging out in the middle of an intersection on the way to the train station, so 
That was uh, rather odd. I mean, I do live by forest preserves, but uh, right in the middle of a very busy intersection, two deer just hanging out. How, how far the, out are you? Uh, just a little bit on the south. Forest, uh, south, you know, oh, you, Cook County Forest Preserves. You're in, uh, you're in, um, I forgot the name of it now, but Beverly, right? Yes. So yeah, that's not exactly deer country. <laughs> no, not really. So we saw some, uh, well, I say myself. And other drivers around me just wondering what these two deer were doing in the middle of the road. Uh, just kind of hanging out, perhaps lost from the uh, their parents. I'm not too sure, but they looked very lost. Now, I put this to However, you. Over I put this in, to you. Uh, Hold deer. on. Are we still talking about deer? <laughs> 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 Gotta love that guy, Sean. I love that guy. You still know, on deer. You when know, I got to work, no deer in the office. <laughs> not, the, not the busiest day as we've been seeing the last five, six trading days, but uh, still, there's always a market in some index one way or another. I put this to you, dear listeners, to, to figure out on your own and perhaps ponder as we go into the transition to break here of the nexus of violence in the city is on the south side, and Sean Fitzgerald also calls the south side of the city home. So coincidence or not, I leave that to you. Uh, you've heard Sean on the show right now. He's quite the rabble rouser. Yeah, but he lives in Beverly. That's 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 Shishi South. Side. Yeah, you're right. It's not that's really not the real true South, south side. side. You gotta get a little bit farther south than that. But he's he's on the way to the South Side. So let's just say he's South Side adjacent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and with that conundrum percolating in our minds, we're going to dive right into the trading block. The trading block. All right, and welcome to the trading block. This is, of course, where we talk about what was trading on, what was moving the old street today, and as Sean alluded to, wasn't a whole heck of a lot. Uh, we another another one of our infamous 0.0% unched days on the S&P today. We couldn't even get a tenth of a percent to to talk about on the show today. Literally unched on the day. Most of the other major indices pretty much followed suit with fragmentary moves at best <laughs> the vix uh given are taking back a little ground today up two tenths of a percent to a little over 14 in the vix cash up about 1.4 percent on the day today so uh, a lot of actually i said two tenths of a percent today. two tenths of a point <laughs> let me change that up uh and it wasn't much whatever yeah, no way yeah it wasn't it wasn't really much to really discuss so not too much going on we're heading into expiration time so there's not too much really to ponder from uh the vix perspective in terms of you know we had talked on previous shows about how vix cash and vix futures were really lining up particularly on the front month there was a, a level of parity there we hadn't seen in in ages and uh, now of course going into expiration that's not exactly too too whoppingly surprising <laughs> but uh a couple of weeks ago it certainly was and uh, so watching for that to diverge is not really the, uh, the the interesting game it once was. Of course, Uncle Mike, I know you're quite sad because uh, Apple has retraced from 700. So all of your hopes and dreams are, are dashed, sir, for, se for Apple to be 700 and off to the races. Well, just I have that 690 call. I'm waiting out for October. So just kind of it, it's definitely for once in, in my life, Apple, it's kind of boring. So what is going to be the the replacement for the big fruit in your old portfolio? Are you thinking a little a little forward to uh, to liven up your days? Maybe a little Groupon for some action? What are you, what are you looking at? <laughs> you getting back into the you getting back into the metals? What's what's the big thing on your radar here? Probably a variety of a lot of things. Different clients are wanting different things, and uh, I have some clients that you know I've talked with <clears throat> all the clients that I have in Apple on this. Some of them want to sell it. Some of them are rather reluctant to sell it. And then I have. Uh, Others that just have some major tax issues with this just because it's gone up so much so fast, which is obviously a good problem to have. So no one's really no one's exactly mad about it, but probably just is a mix of a lot of things right now, just because Apple's become such a big part of certain people's portfolios because it's gone up so ridiculously much. We just kind of have to mix it up again. Yes. Pay the taxes. Take the money. Five oh, in my mind, in my, in, in my, it's, Steve, it's Steve Miller time for this one. Take the money and run. Oh, that's the song. Take the money and run. Is that yes. is that the one? That's the one. How how is your how is your silence a hint to that song? I'm I'm a bit perplexed. 
Oh, oh no, that's not the song. That's not the. That's not the song. No, oh, no. oh, I thought, I thought oh. he just. I thought he just gave it away there. I <laughs> no, even, I'm dumb. Oh. I could figure that out, man. When you say take the money and <laughs> run it, say there. Color. Oh, oh, a little bit, little bit better really hints than, than than what we had. Okay, so I guess we still have to wait and see for when yes. you're called away in October for what the actual song will be andrew aside from if we're at 689 it might continue yeah that's true if apple continues to tease you and says uh you want out but we're keeping you in <laughs> yeah then we'll recollar it and ride it up to 740 baby keep pulling me back in like that fantastic film godfather 3 andrew aside from corralling clams and various other crustaceans what what caught your eye in today's activity uh, I think the biggest two things to me, uh, one, uh, oil, oil kind of evolved, uh, popped a little, well, quite a bit, actually, it's down a bunch. So a USO, which is usually a pretty junky product to trade volatility, uh, it popped pretty good here. So, uh, looking at selling some juice in the USO, Mostly for the ride back up, like out of the money put spreads. Uh, VIX not doing anything. It's kind of feeling very fair. Can't get below 13 and a half. I don't blame it. That's like a 1% move per day kind of number, and it just isn't really, it feels sort of fair. There's really no, there's really just the volley. This is the problem with the low vol environment is it stinks. It's not any fun to trade volatility because there isn't any. So you're going, I'm looking at, you know, like some of the commodities. And I also think the, uh, like the Euro is moving a lot again. Uh, it's down like what, two handles over the last three days or something like that. So as the ECB tries to maybe put together a real plan for Spain. Uh, so anyway, those two things, I mean, those are the kind of things I'm watching still like being long the commodities in general though, like, like gold, gold stuff. You know, people write in all the time saying, you know, why is a low and volatility environment so, you know, detrimental to options traders? Why do options traders not like low vol? And you're exactly right, Andrew. That's nothing really interesting to put on right now. I was looking at some different things today. What see what floated my boat, and none of it did really. Nothing really. Yeah, like I was looking at Ford. Butterflies yeah, kind exactly. Of. You know, like, you know, you can't really. There's no real incentive to sell premiums. No reason to you know, covered calls. Not exciting. Even a and some of these names are so lackluster. They're surging, but nothing dramatic. So I don't like to use my even my traditional you know uh, bullish risk reversal. Not exactly floating my boat. Bearish risk reversals. You got to be crazy to put that on in Groupon right now because who knows where that thing's going. Even though I probably <laughs> lean to the dark side. I'm not. I'm not going to have that sort of uh, I that I sort of weight again. Groupon trade at the beginning of the week is the uh, the five straddle Pink was trading for a dollar. Still calm in three years or less. <laughs> oh, you're you're, you're three years. I, I give it you know sooner than that probably. But <laughs> I'll be oh, at two. Thought... I'll be at two and a half. How about that? Wow, I like that. The Oc five straddle is trading for five bucks, and you could buy the five and a half call for a quarter. Uh, like two days ago, right before it had that kind of pop. Whenever the CEO said they're getting into the mobile payments business, that will probably wipe out the last. <laughs> cash trying to beat paypal and uh google to that um so they should probably exit that business before they get into it so they don't run out of all their money but anyway, i thought that the trade looked okay so just basically selling that at the money straddle and buying an upside call and if it ripped you still made like uh 75 cents so i, I didn't think that looked too it's bad too bad speaking of group on it's too bad mr Grigas isn't on the show because he was Doing a little hat dance yesterday oh, <laughs> that his uh, that his buy had turned into some profits. He famously was working that 501 bid uh, about a month ago or so, a few weeks ago in Groupon, and has since been on quite the roller coaster ride. Uh, I of course had I've been rolling downside quite a bit in Groupon of late, but I, I took it all off the table once uh, Mr. Bernanke came to our aid. And uh, you have should not. Have, you should have seen Grigas in the office. It was like Hulk Hogan <laughs> stood on his desk, stood on his desk, ripped his shirt, ripped off. his shirt open. I, I told him, I said, at least write some calls against that garbage. The deeper in the money, the better. <laughs> <laughs> write the three. It makes the one call. How's that looking to you right now? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think he heeded my advice. I think he wants to let it ride. Of course, oh, no. to, for he a while today, Groupon was the sole light in a sea of darkness. It was the only green on the screen. It was up uh, trading 540 at one point today, and then it closed today down about 20 cents to 515. So perhaps Mr. Grigas has missed his opportunity Yet again, I know he was saying now that I've rolled out of my, all of my uh, downside that he wants to double down.
around. So we'll see. We'll see who has the right end of that spectrum because I was teasing him that he is my contrary indicator earlier. And I wish he. I wish he knew he was going. I, I knew he was going long because I would have put my put spreads around. But <laughs> anybody uh, catch the uh, Facebook uh, moves the last two hours? We had pretty much a boring day, hanging around 22.85. All the way to about 2 p.m. Eastern time, then a nice spike up to 23.20 and a quick sell-off all the way down to 22.60. So it was very interesting chart. I was wondering what was going on there. I did see. Speaking of Facebook, I, I watched some of the intraday stuff today. But I, speaking of Facebook, I have it on my on my brain. I'm glad you brought up Facebook because I saw an interesting article the other day that I wanted to bring up on the show, and they were talking about for all the hype and all the furor over the lead up to the Facebook IPO and all these other names getting out in front of it on the web 2.0 side, like LinkedIn and what have you. So they could get some of that ride, some of that wave and all everyone racing to buy in and the, the, just the apocalypse that was the IPO and the furor afterwards and the sell off, all of this hype and all this activity around, around the Facebook IPO. And people forget that on the exact same day, Annie's went public, which is the maker of those organic uh, mac and cheese and all these other little things that I'm sure if you have little kids at home, you know about, like we do. What's the symbol? Uh, I forgot the ticker symbol. It's Annie's, uh, you know, but they, uh, and the, the the winning bet by far, by orders of magnitude, has been if you dumped Facebook and just bet on mac and cheese that same day, you would have been up substantial amounts right now as opposed to being down symbol. half symbol of your money. Boy, Nancy, Nancy Yellow. Yeah, that's bunny, funny. that's right, bunny, because they have all the uh, the bunny style mac and cheese. Yeah, this one is trading nearly uh, for over forty seven dollars right now, and it went public back at uh, yeah, it hit forty on the opening day. It traded about I think it opened around thirty six, and then uh, just yes. gapped up to forty. And this thing's never looked back since. It's up so nearly thirty one percent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so if you had f- forgotten the hype and just invested in mac and cheese, a core staple of our economy and our food supply, if you will, you would be looking fairly pretty right now instead of being down almost 50% like the rest of the Facebook crowd. This, this stock only trades 250,000 shares a day. <laughs> well, now that we've mentioned it on the option block, it'll at least do 251,000 shares a day, I would see. Not exactly lighting up the old tape from an options perspective as well. It's doing about 48 contracts a day. Of course, today was a two, almost 3x day. It did 115. So uh, a lot of volume going on. People diving into 30 a lot of those Oc 45 puts. Looks like actually a, a call spread versus versus puts went up. Oc 45.50 versus the 45 puts. So there you go. Unusual activity. Lighting up bunny today. 90 contracts. <laughs> but yes, I thought that was an interesting dichotomy there of how all this fear, all this hype, and it really, you know, forget the hype because Bunny is where the action is apparently these days. <laughs> What's up, Doc? Exactly. Anything else catching your eye, Mr. Tussaw, Mr. Andrew, or Mr. Sean? Nothing on my screen lighting up. So I think with that, we shall dive right into the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. All right, you know it, you love it. Yes, it's the Odd Block where we highlight some of the interesting options activity that's lighting up the old tape today. And Uncle Mike, I'm glad you're on the show today because this first one is right up your alley. It's Dollar Tree. Not not Dollar General? I'm sorry, we couldn't get Dollar General, but we got the next best thing. We got Dollar Tree. Oh, I don't know about that one. Of course, ticker symbol DLTR on a bit of a rally today. It's been on a rally for quite a while, actually. This name closed up about 5% to 49.41 today and has been essentially on an extended rally over the past three years. You pull up a chart here of uh, of good old DLTR, and this thing has been... Uh, was uh, trading south of 25 not too long ago and is now trading, pushing 50. So it's been quite the rally, quite the bad times are indeed good times for the dollar sector. And, uh, of course, despite this rally, we've seen a bit of a retracement uh, over the past few months. Probably not surprising given the fact the stock has been up so much over the past few years. Uh, it's actually, this is the most it's retraced uh, since a couple months ago, actually uh, July and August of last year. 
And uh, now, though, as it's starting to settle down a little bit, it's sitting on all, all the tech guys like to look at that 200-day moving average. DLTR is indeed sitting right there. Uh, we saw some people starting to take that as an indicator they needed to dive into some upside today. Looking at the stats here on DLTR, this thing's averaging about 3,000 contracts a day, so about 100x of good old bunny. <laughs> but <laughs> they did nearly 11,000 today, which is a heavy day for Dollar Tree stores. Uh, the bulk of that being on the call side, with calls doing well over three and a half times their normal volume today. The biggest activity coming on the OCK, 52 half calls, where about 2,500 went up total on the day, including uh, some sizable blocks of nearly 1,000 this morning being picked up for 30 cents followed by a purchase of nearly another thousand for about 35 cents. So all these blocks coming in throughout the day really, uh, really gapped up the vol. Also the AK, uh, yeah, at those AK 52 halves when they traded 35 cents are trading roughly a, a 26 vol, which is a pretty impressive premium from where they've been trading of late. So yeah, and also uh, closing activity looks like on the SEP 50s or about 3,000 of those went up today against open interest of nearly 6,000 contracts. So people taking some money off the table there on the SEP side. But a lot of people looking longer term and positioning for some pops here. OC 50 is also going up nearly 1,100 times today for a variety of prices around a buck 15, a buck 20. So a lot of a lot of call upside being uh, being lit up here in DLTR. I know we've joked about the dollar sector in the past, Uncle Mike. Is this one you, uh, perhaps now that you're post-Apple, in the post-Apple phase of your career, is this the new holding that will take up the bulk of your time? Well, I don't know if we're, we're not in the post-Apple phase just yet. So we got to clarify that. But as, as you're leaning to these golden years of your career here. <laughs> Yes. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't be against getting a little bit of the dollar sector in the portfolio. Nothing wrong with that. Now, what I find interesting is I uh, wonder why they uh, didn't go into – no. actually, they did. If you check out the November 50s, there was over almost 2,100 of those bought, with earnings being November 8th. Surprise, all that activity was in October and not really more into November. Hey, but you know what? How about that time spread? The no 55 – Ock, 52 and a half diagonal. That doesn't look like a bad spread. They pumped up these calls a little bit. You, huh? can, you can do it for, looks like even or maybe even a credit if you play it, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, I mean, obviously, and you want a rally now. I wonder if this is, is there, is this a buyout, one of these, you know, little buyout family, you know, discount stores where you can buy a bunch of junk for kids' birthday parties and stuff like that? Yeah, it's one of those kind of things. Everything south Everything. of a buck. Yep. The two saw the two saw life mantra. <laughs> Love it. Buy it south of a buck, sell it for seven hundred. That's his. There we mantra. go. There we go. Ooh yes. He's well that known. K Y O mantra. He's well the only thing that we pay more than a dollar for is an option. He's well known to have scooped up many thousands of shares of Apple back in high school when it was trading south of what three. <laughs> That yeah, is, it, was, uh, it was cheap and like I remember it started like God, it was ugly, like ninety two or something like that when it was just the whole world was definitely ugly for Apple. Yes, those uh, early days, not those the fall edge. Those just, Gil Emilio days were uh, were dark, dark days for everyone. He was a great <laughs> CEO. Yes, he was quite a man, <laughs> and they replaced him with quite a man as well. Uh, maybe we'll do hey, a, that. That maybe, was the best. That was the best trade up ever. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, of course, human being wise, I don't think Steve Jobs was exactly lights up the tape, but uh, he did a decent job, I suppose, at Apple. Uh, uh, you know, he made some people some money, employed some people. Come on, don't don't yeah. give the don't be somebody's <laughs> got to be good at something. You can't be good at everything. He made some people some money. I love I love how we excuse, uh, you know, seriously aberrant behavior. Oh, he made some money, so it's all right. It's not like he had anybody whacked. You, you know, don't know. You don't know where the bodies right? are buried in Steve Jobs' lawn. You don't know. <laughs> Don't say those kind of things, Andrew. It comes back to bite you. All right. We'll do the Steve Jobs rant another day. That, that's for an even slower day than today. We actually have some activity to talk about. Sticking with the retail sector, we're going to move on over to a name we probably haven't talked about in quite a while, but was seriously active today. J.C. Penny, ticker symbol JCP. This one was down uh, 11% on the day to close at 2583. This is the name that's been averaging about... 40,000 contracts a day, which is serious volume for JCPenney in and of itself. And then today doing over 181,000 contracts. Oh, so that's a miss. That's going to make some of my option pit people happy. They hate this stock. Oh, yeah? Well, there yeah, you go. 
did they announce like bad same store sales well, or something? You no, know, there's a couple of the things. There were I think it was a confluence of events. First off, they announced uh, that they uh, they are going to open uh, Disney boutiques in 500 some odd of its stores, which in and of itself I don't think is that bad. But apparently the the traders not liking it because they really hammered the stock. Um, I think there might have been some other. Let me pull up. There might have been some other news on it today, but essentially the combination of that and maybe some downgrades off analysts and a few others really kind of just led to the uh, get the hell out of Dodge mentality that hit uh, J.C. Penny today. We saw, um, let's see, you know, I, given all this activity, not too surprising that puts were lighting up the tape. I'm looking here at this uh, these options chain and this options chain in uh, in J.C. Penny, and I don't think I've ever seen it this. Uh, this is like QQQ or something like this. I'm looking. This is just this is activity and op- across the board on on myriad of strikes. Uh, but the biggest action we saw, uh, at least early in the session, was the SEP 29 puts. That one lit up the tape uh, when we wrote this up. This had traded 8,600 times by the time the the end of the session. It had traded over 15, nearly 16,000 puts going up on open interest of a little over 7,000. So there could have been some closing, but the bulk of that was uh, opening sales uh, with a big block of 2,500 sold, hitting the bid for a buck 58 here. Uh, we also saw the SEP 28 puts where a 7,000 lot went up against open interest of about 13,000 contracts. And now what's interesting about that is that if you look, remember our activity from yesterday, and I'm sure all of our listeners are surfing to the Options Insider every day to check out the different activity we have profiled for you there. Remember yesterday we uh, profiled a long strangle that went up in JCPenney 7,000 times, coincidentally. It was a SEP 3028 strangle that someone picked up for 80 cents. Looks like today they got out of that uh, put side of the equation. For a lot. Yeah. <laughs> not exactly a bad do here. He's he's not too upset about that trade. He got about two and a half X uh, on a return on an, for one day's investment. So he was on the right side of that fence. Letting the calls go worthless. I don't think he's too upset about that either, given the fact that he did about 250% on that trade. Um, yeah, he made, given the size he did, it worked out to about well over a quarter million dollars this guy picked up. Yeah, so they're going to put coffee shops in or something like that. Yeah, some that's... coffee shops and Disney boutiques and a few other things. Uh, the big size, though, this there was a big, big ratio put spread that hit the tape actually late uh, yesterday, which we kind of highlighted as well. This was a Nov 27-22 ratio put spread. It's traded 25,000 by 50,000 times uh, yesterday for a net debit of 82 cents uh now that this sucker is well south of 27 it looks like this this guy is this guy's in the money as we wrote this up he hadn't uh closed it i was written up our guy wrote it up about midday i'm looking here to check to make sure and yeah this thing is still on the open interest is still there so this guy is obviously thinking there's more uh there's more room to run here in jc penny he's got some room on the downside and he's going to take it all because he hasn't closed this spread out yet even though it's already a clear winner in his favor this one by two here on uh i mean he that talking about the way he set it up that's a um <laughs> that's a that's a pretty much a home run at this point so uh he's letting jc penny run a little bit more to the downside meanwhile we saw someone also diving in doing 13,000 of the no 19 puts looks like there might have been a, a risk reversal or a strangle going up 13,000 no 19 puts and the no 22 calls they don't have prices going up here i'm just i'm just pulling these off the tape as i'm looking as i said there's a ton of volume to parse here in jc penny this one is just this is just king of the day. I mean, in terms of just uh, that act- stock, the best thing ever happened to that stock is that new CEO because then now it trades. Yeah, exactly. It just, he brought some of that Apple. Suck. He brought some of that now Apple Apple love with him. People said, "Wow, this guy hit a home run with Apple retail." If anyone could save J.C. Penney, uh, it will be him. I think the people are forgetting though that J.C. Penney sells soft goods, and uh, you're never going to have the dollars and their sales per square foot that you have selling soft goods that you do selling MacBooks and gadgets. You can sell thousands of dollars per square foot if you're just selling high-end gadgets, whereas, you know, you're selling dresses and clothes and maybe some a little bit of hardware and some other things. Your sales per square foot are, are never going to come close to that. So I think people have some lofty expectations. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> true. Games. I mean, who, who even knows what, what JCPenney, what their brand even means anymore? 
So uh, interesting stuff here. But yeah, a lot of paper. We can spend all day pretty much parsing the paper here in JC Penny. But I wanted to hit on that put spread because uh, that one by two really is uh, looking fairly good. <laughs> uh, and he's sitting on it right now as uh, as we speak. Uh, overall volume, like I said, was well above the uh, typical. We're talking well almost four and a half X on the day. So uh, interesting stuff. And then one more thing we're going to hit on before we dive into listener mail. A quick review here on uh Jeffrey's group ticker symbol Jeff J E F and we saw a lot of downside puts lighting up the tape yesterday and uh, this firm reported earnings prior to the bell this morning and it looks like those uh those puts were let's just say fairly well timed someone picked up 5000 of the set 15 puts yesterday uh picked them up for 15 cents a piece and today they came out and essentially were off 7.5% following their earnings announcement. So let's see where those set puts went out. Uh, they went out 45 cents at 55 cents. So this guy tripled his money again in a few hours. Not a bad work for a few hours and uh, a well-timed 5,000 lot, shall we say. So uh, we like to point those ones out as well. Keep an eye on Jeffries. Might be some more downside to go here. This guy closed out some of them today, but he still has a bunch of these open. So uh, interesting, interesting activity, well-timed activity, shall we say, in Jefferies. And with that, that's going to close out the old odd block today. And now we're going to dive right into the Express Block. The Express Block, brought to you by Options Express. Options Express lets you trade where and when you want for every level of trading, from advanced charting, free daily trading ideas, and free educational resources. Options Express is the online broker for all traders. Best of all, Options Express allows you to trade stocks, options, and futures all in a single account on powerful yet easy to use trading platforms, including mobile devices. Visit optionsexpress.com/oxradio for your free account. Options Express Express is a member of FINRA, SIPC, and MFA. All right. Welcome to the Express Block. This is the portion of the show where Sean, man of action, man of mischief, Fitzgerald, takes the reins, and I get to rest my aching vocal cords. So, Mr. Man of Action, Mr. Man of Mischief, Mr. Man, indeed, of mystery, what is going on in the land of OX today? What caught your eye, sir? All right. Well, the volume was down, er you know, like I said earlier, so... Regarding the notable uh, sizable trades I saw coming in, I'm going to talk about those at the end of the block here. I usually start first. Um, but this time, I'd like to start first a little bit more on the educational risk side. Uh, something that happens every quarter reads regarding assignment risk because of a dividend regarding a group of ETFs that are heavily traded. And again, these ETFs are the SPY, the Qs, and the Diamonds. All go X di dividend tomorrow. But a lot of clients fail to realize, and we at Options Express stress and actually let them know when we review accounts and see who are short calls that could be in the money after this these dividends hit, that they will be paying the dividend. And also for your Anyone listening to the show, this is good education for you as well. Perfect example here. The Spider spies today, I believe, closed around 146.71. It's paying an 81 cent dividend. If you are short the 146 calls and you do not know about this dividend, you are at a very high risk of possibly getting a sign this evening, waking up tomorrow, short the stock, and having to pay the dividend. So we at Options Express do not tell clients to close out the trades, but we just want them to be aware of that. And it's not only for the SPY, it's also for the Qs, the Diamonds, and a few other ETFs. So a the, lot of people forget that these these indexes have these dividend components. You know, they think they're just do not realize, massive and basket every, every issues, quarter. and then they forget that they have these actual dividend components, and that comes to bite them quite a bit, especially if they're doing, like you said, these these naked shorts they have sitting around that are getting close to at the money and their risk of assignment. They don't even realize it. Just there's almost should be like a little flag that goes off when you sell that trade in the Options Express uh, and Options Express system. Say, by the way, dividend pending. Keep an eye on this one. You know, and it can happen to, I mean, even if you have an October option, you know, obviously the risk of getting assigned on an option further down is is less than September's because they expire tomorrow, but it can happen, and I have seen it happen. 
So everyone, all the listeners here, please be aware, every quarter, if you are, you have spy spreads on Q's diamonds, they are paying dividends. Uh, the amounts are not always determined like a stock like Disney or Microsoft. The numbers usually come out in the beginning of week. Um, SPY originally was thought to be uh, 69 cents, but it came in just above 81 cents. So depending upon the strikes you have, if you are short calls and that dividend kicks in, somebody drops an exercise and you get assigned, you wake up in the morning, you are paying the dividend as well. So if you're short 10 calls, you're paying $810 on the SPY. Um, moving on to a little bit of education some more. And the only reason I want to bring this up because I received a few phone calls today. A couple of phone calls regarding the similar ETFs and the likes of the GLD and the IWMs. Why are there no weeklies today? Where, why have you guys not put up the September week four GLDs, the diamonds, the XEOs? Reason being weeklies that have quarterly expirations of September 28th will not have weeklies as well. Reason being, because they would have would be expiring on the same date. So that's another bit of education. Pretty much wrapped up in all the same ETFs that are very heavily traded by many retail and institutional clients. So I wanted to point that out before I get into, go into some notable trades that we did see on the desk today. But one last thing. Again, as I was harping on last show, jobless claims, again, go unnoticed. They did drop the 382,000. However, we were expecting them to drop the 375. So again, not as good. Market did start to sell off when that news came off. Futures are down about 60 points. But again, it just seems like we forget about it and the Dow closes up. So something I'm still stymied by and continue to uh, be completely amazed about that we just do not pay attention to the job market anymore. Um or job claims and the monthly jobs report, I should say. So if anybody else would like to comment on that before I go on to the lovely notable trades on the desk today. Who needs jobs when you got government? I guess so. but Not, not, just, one, half, not one half the people get paid by the government just to sit around and, you know, it's only 47, and drink soda pop. I think it was 47%, <laughs> Romney, said, not half. <laughs> oh, he said 47%? He said 47 well, that, well, this is what I love about this. So, okay... You're like you're a big slob. You're sitting on the couch. You're drinking a bunch of coke, right? You're getting diabetes. The state is paying Medicaid for you. They're paying all your other stuff. You don't do anything, but all you do is cost the state money. It's ridiculous. Well, I don't. I just, I'm still. I'm still flabbergasted by that whole thing. <laughs> We're getting into uh, Romney territory here, so perhaps we'll uh, we'll steer away <laughs> political <laughs> that is political territory. Political. I just realized it's <laughs> political. You know, hey, that's okay. By the way, if you want to do that, <laughs> we'll have a whole other show. We'll call it. Uh, we'll call it political roundup. Strike all that. Political Strike all roundup that. with Andrew. Strike no, all that. Let it sit in there. Let it percolate. Let let your views be known, Andrew, so we could uh, alienate half the audience. It always it always works. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, we all do. We just kind of like the if you want to if you want to build a book of business in the trading world, you you. you have half your clients long, half your clients short, you'll always get commission revenue that way. And then, so for our show, we need to have like the Obama sucks show and the Romney sucks show. So that way we know that we're, we're hedged on both sides. And then if, there you go. There you go. We'll I, be right there. I think people already have figured out. They've listened to more than one or two shows that we kind of tend to dump equally on both sides. So no, no love lost for uh, either the administration or the challengers in this sense, because I think we all know that pretty much neither side has a clue when it comes to any of this stuff. Sean, anything else on your on your agenda there? Yeah, I just wanted to point that out. You know, everyone trading those, uh, you know, March, June, September, December, um, ETFs, make sure you pay attention to those dividends. And um, they got some interest today on the uh, desk with uh, Trulia, TRLA. It was probably the biggest IPO since the Facebook flop surge of 47%. I was getting a lot of calls. Obviously, people looking to trade options, but those will not be around for another few weeks. So it was a lot of long, long buys today on TRLA in the $23 range, mostly on the uh, – on the desk. Um, a couple other notable trades. VIX took an order from one client, two different strikes in October, selling open uh, 1,000 VIX, October 40 calls for 10 cents. Still a believer in uh, not much uh, volatility on the horizon. 
Also sold 450 of the EVIX, 50 calls for a nickel. So not the largest trade, but possibly layups. I do that uh, trade all. On. I do that trade all day before I did the what was it? Twenty thousand of the VIX of the Feb seventies. <laughs> we saw a couple of weeks ago for fifteen cents. Uh, just yeah. insanity. Then um, another What's stock. What's the margin on those? Those got to be pretty high, right? That's yeah, some, oh that's yeah, some very big very high very high margin on those. So this is this would be one of the wealthier clients placing these trades, and he does do this often. Another notable trade on a company that's pretty much on its deathbed. Rim. Got a call today. Um, keep in mind now, earnings are next Thursday to 27th. Had a gentleman call in today selling 500 of the week four, $6 puts for $0.15. Cents, and then calling back about 10 minutes later and selling 300 of the week four, $6.5 puts at $0.30. Cents. So this gentleman is believing that RIM will have... Somewhat decent earnings, closing around seven dollars today, or maybe earnings just just is just going to be a non-event. Now, um, how crazy last, is that that we're talking about six and a half puts and they're relevant in the conversation here for Rim? That's just insane. Uh, anyone who's been watching Rim for the last couple of years and see it dancing at that level is well, if you just uh, is remember crazy. for downtown Chicago, what five years ago, everybody walking down the street had a BlackBerry. You don't see too many people with Blackberries on their hips anymore. No, um, you don't. That, I, they peaked when Obama got elected, right? I think they peaked a couple of years ago when they were trading. Uh, in 2011, they were they hit a high of 70, I believe. I mean, unless they got they gap. This for a spread, the six and a half put spread, weekly set put spread in rim for 15 cents. I should have looked at this today. That's pretty cheap, don't you think? 15 cents for that put spread. You mean week one, week two? Or? Yeah, like SEP expiring tomorrow, and oh, you know what? I'm looking at the wrong strike. Never mind. I'm like, no wonder why that's so cheap. I, was I can't say, even look I, at the I, right I don't, strikes. I don't see this mythical spread, but I'm sure it's what a maroon. What in a your, maroon. In your head, I'm sure it's lovely, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> I create all kinds of trades in my head that I think are great. <laughs> How could this three by six and a half not line up to you? It makes perfect sense to me. Ay, 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 ay. What a maroon. What a maroon. All yeah, right. Touching back on that JCPenney Disney store. I didn't get any JCPenney. Any trades today, but I did get, uh, I did buy 220 options of the October Disney 52 and a half dollar calls for about a, I think it was about a buck oh one or a buck oh two. So, client going in, not sure if he was doing that related to that JC Penney's boutique store um, news, but uh, it was it came out early this morning with the phone call. Actually, that was the first trade of the day that I took. Again, that was 250 of the October 52 and a half calls. I think Disney is right around 52 and a half right now. Yeah. So as far as trading, that that's as far as we go with the options expressed us today. And always, as I like to do, I'd like to end with a historical quote, or not really quote. This. We'll go historical news. So we're, we're bringing on Winston Churchill onto the show then, or <laughs> have no fear, but fear itself, or Iron Curtain, or any of those those chestnuts. Yeah. Similar to my Labor Day uh, explanation uh, a couple weeks back about that closing, what, 65% Friday before Labor Day. The market always closes up. I got something else here for you today. The Dow has not closed down 1% or higher since June 25th, which is a string of 61 straight trading days without a drop of 1% or more. So there you go, realized vol sellers. Uh, there's your uh, 61 straight days say, without a one percent <laughs> drop in the Dow Jones. That's it for the express block today. Implied vol sellers and realized vol buyers. You can see why that spread has been so hot for the past. Hold it, hold it, one one more time. What was that? What was that you just did there? Which, 61 did straight was, days without a one percent drop. One percent or more drop on the Dow Jones. Really? Last time it dropped one percent or more, June 25th. Wow. All right, I'm going to keep on my little ratio put spreads. Now. There you go. You, you've sold Andrew now. you sold that is, Andrew. That's All right. trading I'm, ar I'm arguing with Mark about him, and he's like, dude, just keep in mind, you're going to be happy. I'm like, and this is a guy that likes to buy juice. I'm like, this market isn't going to do junk for the next two weeks. I'm going to suck on this. <laughs> Write it down, now. Andrew. There June 25th was the last time we dropped 1% or more. All right, and with that, we're going to dive right into the old mailbag. Now it's time to empty the mailbag and see what our listeners have to say. It's the mail block 
All right, and welcome to the mailbag. And I have to say, the new comment system, you guys are really uh, hitting it hard. You're also lighting up Twitter with a lot of fun questions. So we'll see how many comments and questions we can get to here in the old mailbag. We'll kick things off with a, a tweet from a Billy. He's at b one l l mu i don't know <laughs> i think that's what that is one of those great twitter handles that makes no sense when you look at it and he writes uh for the mailbag when are they going to start the options minis i trade apple and i can only trade two contracts right now and also pre-market options um let's start off with that first one obviously a hot topic i was just over in new york everyone was obviously in the conference everyone was obviously hitting on the minis uh, I don't. I didn't hear any more concrete dates on that. Sean, do you have any more, uh, maybe more recent data on what you're hearing over there from when those minis are going to finally be listed? You know, we were talking about that, I believe, a month ago or so. Um, I believe it was also a, uh, a listener mail uh, question. Um, I have not heard anything. Um, I have been getting more and more phone calls about it, so... Obviously, the news is getting out there uh, to the not only the institutional, but all, obviously the retail client base. Uh, there's a lot of interest, but uh, there's nothing on the CBOE website. So I've checked it actually as recently as uh, uh, yesterday of an actual date. So to answer the question, I, I do not have a date. Um, I just don't think it's been determined yet. Uh, I believe it's something that's going to be in high demand and very popular like the weeklies. But when, I, I do not have an answer. Yeah, and just to recap, the issue there was that ISE and NYSE ARCA both had competing versions of those contracts that they had put forth. And so there was a question now of determining which contract they wanted or more precisely which features from each they wanted to take to combine into the resulting contract. Then, of course, getting regulatory approval on that resulting contract. So that's where some of the delay has come. I think they finally hashed out all all of the bells and whistles of what exactly, which features of each they want to use. I think it's just down to a question of approval now, which anyone in the option space knows could take quite a long time. As for the second part of your your question here, pre-market options, um, that's always a little bit of a pipe dream of mine here, Billy. That's not really going to happen anytime soon. We've hit on that a few times on the show about some interest in perhaps... Not so much pre, we haven't talked pre, but more uh, after hours order books with some limited liquidity for customers to maybe come out and close open interest around earnings, that sort of thing. There has been, I'd say, tepid interest in that from some of the exchanges, but uh, there really has no movement on that whatsoever. So I would certainly not expect anything on that anytime soon. Moving on to uh, a tweet here from Jordan Greenwald. He's at Economic Bubble on Twitter. He writes uh, more of a comment here. He says, uh, as a result of our last show, uh, even the options guys are talking about Facebook. Is that good or is that bad? And so he's just saying that the Facebook hype has reached uh, absurd levels. And I, I certainly agree with you, Jordan, which is why I brought up the whole Annie's mac and cheese today. I think that's the, that's the best antidote I could think of to all the Facebook hype out there is that mac and cheese blew the doors off of the most anticipated IPO in history. Um, so, yeah, good or bad that we're talking about it. You kind of have to talk about the big stories as unpleasant as they may be. <laughs> um, interesting stuff going on. Look at Check out Bunny if you're fed up with Facebook, as I know. I am. <laughs> and then like people have to look at the market cap on those IPOs. They can forget about that. They're like, oh, it's only 38 bucks, but the market cap is $100 billion. <laughs> Bunny, market cap, $5. Okay. <laughs> hey, if you had to ask me, uh, yeah. where, where, where is the growth right now? Social networking or organic mac and cheese for kids? I'm leaning on the ladder because I got one of those at home and he likes his little mac and cheese and all the little mommies out there want to feed their kid healthy mac and cheese. So organic mac and cheese is the growth market. Stuff them full of mac and cheese. Facebook already at almost a billion users. I don't know if there's much growth uh, to be had there unless they really take over all of it. got to make money off them. Yeah, well, that's another problem too. Growing users and or making money. Whereas mac and cheese, it's always there. It's always going to make money for you. Uh, moving on here... Um, this one I don't even know. Let me pull it up if I can see if we can get it. Uh, you guys familiar? Someone writes in and wants to know about the EWZ AC 57 calls at a buck forty. This is the iShares uh, MSCI Brazil index. 
Um, do not ignore, he says. <laughs> or ignore, that's <laughs> Yeah, <fine>. I think that, <laughs> that's a great tweet. He's like, take it or leave it. I don't know, this is from Options Anonymous. The Oc 57s here, let me pull them up for a buck 40. Let's see if that's even uh, a relevant thing anymore. Uh, well, given the fact they went, right out, they went out 107 at 109, I'm going to have to say ignore. <laughs> it took us a day or two to get to your question here, uh, Mr. Options Anonymous. So, and yeah, and this time, unless you're talking about writing them as a covered call or something like that, then by all means, I hope you did, uh, because uh, this one has retraced a bit, trading 56.13 as of today. I don't really... Toast. Yeah. It's amazing on that stock, um, traded 13,700,000 shares, and the average volume is 13,768,000. So... Uh, it pretty much does its uh, average every single day right on the head, it looks like. So very yeah. interesting, interesting stock, um, Options Anonymous, but um, I'm going to have to ignore as well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> here's, a, here's a tweet from uh, someone who goes by the handle Toxic Ted. I like it. He writes, Groupon Oxic call, Ox, excuse me, excuse me, one more time. Groupon October 6 calls for 20 cents or the Oc 4 half puts for 20 cents. Pick your poison. I'm assuming since he's one of our listeners, he's leaning towards the dark side of that equation, which one to sell. I'm assuming he's not buying. Uh, so I'll let you go first, Andrew. Oc 6 calls or Oc, six, oc 4 half puts for 20 oh, so cents. He's, so he's, he's at on both, right? Yeah, I'm assuming. Man, as much as I hate to say it, I think I'd rather buy the calls. No, sell the calls? He's, he's selling. He's selling. No, he's not going to sell to you. He wants to know which one do you want to sell. I'm assuming. That's how I'm reading it. Oh, you can oh, read it I'd how you the, like. I'd sell the four and a half puts. You can read it how maybe he wants you to do a ratio one by six and a half, you know, something like that. Yeah. Whatever I'd makes sell you the four feel four and a half puts, I think, for 20 cents an hour. Yeah. I, uh, I, it's I, outside <laughs> the earnings cycle, and Groupon, it already saw the dark side. I think it eventually, it you know... It's going to have a hard time, I think, getting back down there again with all the money flowing in the market. Even if it does, the, the naked risk on that, obviously, much more manageable than uh, the Oxix calls, which, given what we've seen in these Web 2.0 names, there, there could be some crazy upside coming for Groupon, even though I don't really anticipate it. Uh, you never know. Uncle Mike, I'm going to have to go out on a limb and say you lean on the put side of the equation as well. I do, but it's still <laughs> not on my top you kidding me? I, I think I like Dollar Tree a little. Better. I know Groupon is going to become the new big holding. That's going to be the whole BBI going forward. Sean, round us out here. You lean to the puts as well? I'm going to lean to the puts. However, three years or less, it will be on the pink sheets. Yeah. Whoa, <laughs> that is bold. I said at, I said at two and a half, so maybe I might be beating. I you actually there. saw my first ever Zynga thing on my phone. Something <laughs> about like uh, poker. They do like a poker thing or something. Yeah, they have Just, some. I don't, know, some I don't even know apps. how it appeared. I guess it's like my on my iPhone. Some something appeared. They heard you, they heard you talking about it, Andrew. They wanted to give you a free trial so you can give them some love again on the show after all the yeah. bashing. <laughs> no, uh, they're on they're on my list. Although they're not my worst trade. Actually, it is. That is my worst trade of the year. <laughs> By far. Except for that. <laughs> except for it that. It wasn't uh, even that bad, but it was my worst one. Except for so that I, weekly put spread you wanted to put on there. What was it? Uh, J.C. Penny just now? <laughs> the one that didn't exist. That's probably the worst. Um, uh, that, that was the hardest one to get done. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Weekly put spread. <laughs> and I think we're going to close out here, the old mailbag, with a comment on our comment system on the Options Insider. And a lot of you are really diving into that with gusto. So I love to see the immediate feedback on that we get on the shows and, and on the articles we have there. And we have a comment here from Oscar comes from what we discussed on the previous show. He said, I don't know how it's possible for someone to call themselves a money manager without multiple ways to manage money. Mark was this buy side guy not familiar with the concept of cost basis when he decided to just dump the stock rather than buy a put. A uh, quick recap, remember on the last show we discussed uh, someone on a buy side options panel at the conference last week saying that whenever he had the inclination to buy a put to hedge his long equities, he just went to cash instead. <laughs> One of the most amazing things I've heard in quite a long time. And we took he some... just gave up. Yeah, exactly. He just gave up. He just washed his hands of all upside <laughs> and everything. Uh, it was fantastic. I had to make him repeat it several times to make sure I heard him correctly. But yeah, so we, we kind of beat that around a little bit last week. And yes, I, I agree with you, Oscar. This guy, I don't know really how familiar he is with many advanced concepts aside from maybe buy and hold and aside from maybe oh i'm a money manager so i need to be 70 30 or 60 40 stock or stock versus fixed income a little bit in cash and i'm i'm fully diversified and i've done my fiduciary obligation on behalf of my shareholders or my clients i think a lot of people forget that in the world of quote-unquote financial advisors and money managers 
a lot of these guys' true skill sets come on the sales side and not actually on the money managing side. They're very adept at raising assets under management. Actually managing those assets, that's a different ballgame, and they'll do sub-advisories and other things like that to farm out some of their expertise. And I would hope this guy in the future would consider sub-advising to someone like maybe a KYO or someone else who can actually handle the options portion of their portfolio. Because if you're paying someone 2% or whatever it is to go into cash, Whenever he wants to buy a put and has some near-term downside concerns, then uh, you're throwing your money away. Let me comment on these mo money managers real quick. Obviously, every money manager at the end of the year, they want to say they beat the S&P 500 percentage-wise over that given year. Do you know how many money managers right now are beating the S&P 500 for the year? It's a south of 10%. <laughs> It is, 10, it is actually 10% exactly. So knowing that, I was reading an interesting article the other day that people still continue. I'm slightly bearish towards the end of the year here. But knowing that 10% of the money manager down are not beating the S&P 500, there can be a mad rush of these money managers buying stocks going into the year end. Because their clients are going to start saying, I'm paying you the 2% that Mark mentioned or 3%. I could have just done myself, done this myself. So you may see a, a, a strong you know, run in the market towards the end of the year as these money managers try to at least match, if not beat, the S&P 500. And that's always healthy when you have your money you're at your asset manager scrambling to make some last-minute profits. That's when the good trades come in. Uh. <laughs> elite, elite, Mike, Revenge Mike, trading, I love it. Yes, I know. Yes. Tusa is like, well, you just have to own Apple, and you beat the S&P 500. Apple is not it's that not tough. So, it's not so hard, guys. Buy you some guys Apple. Like, Buy Apple. You buy gold. Call or go home. He's like, I'm trying to tell you, this isn't that hard. Join the and short Groupon. Don't forget about that. You yeah. know, just That's buy the good stuff and don't. A little, a little bit of Apple makes up for Ford all the time. <laughs> Ford will yeah, come back it, in vogue. When Ford goes bad, though, it goes from nine bucks to eight bucks. <laughs> That's the thing about Ford. Where's it gonna go? It doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, there's always that government put lurking for Ford. So yeah. uh, you know you have you an know? out there as well. All right, that is going to do it for the old mailbag. I want to thank everyone who wrote in, and now we're gonna dive quickly into our around the block segment. Around the block. All right, and welcome to Around the Block. This is, of course, we look at what's coming up for the rest of the week into the old weekend. Perhaps we'll start with you, Sean. Mix it up a little bit. What are you watching for the rest of the week? You know, I'm always big on economic reports. Tomorrow we don't have much at all unless Europe decides overnight to throw us a curveball. Um, so I think tomorrow we're going to have another day like today um, and see what comes up next week. Not really expecting uh, much much at all tomorrow. We did have Oracle earnings this evening. Uh, I was reading that they did beat, but uh, guidance was light as well as revenue. But as far as anything major happening for tomorrow, no. But uh, next week, I uh, look forward to the show um, on Thursday. Yeah, I'm looking at our Oracle right now. It's pretty much unched in the after hours, so... If you're uh, yeah. a short I mean, premium that... trader, it looks like it worked out pretty well for you here in Oracle. A resounding meh from from Oracle. I guess once <laughs> once meh. once Larry Ellison spent all that money on the island, there was nothing else left to do over at Oracle. <laughs> all right, and what are you watching here coming up for the rest of the week, Mr. Tussaw? Well, like I said, there's like um, Sean said, there's no big economic reports coming out, but uh, right now with uh, gold creeping up to the February highs, uh, just we're kind of in a Kind of an interesting point right now in that uh, I'm, I'm expecting a lot. Of, I'm, I believe we're going to have a lot of movement over the course of the next few weeks just because we haven't had any. And this market's been in hibernation. And one, some something's going to awaken the sleeping bear at some point. The sleeping the, bear. Oh, there's the sleeping bear out of the cave. Uh-oh. Oh. Or maybe the sleeping bull. Who knows? Ah, <laughs> way to give that 50% guarantee, sir. I always do. <laughs> Kavanaugh only goes 48%. I give 50. Some, I'm bold. Some some animal will come out of that cave, whether it has claws or horns, I don't know. Perhaps some crazy hybrid of that both. That is 
Uh, bad euphemisms. All <laughs> <laughs> come out of the cave. <laughs> I don't know. It's not, not that. I think it's not as disturbing as perhaps a Sebastian, uh, Sebastian Pearl of Wisdom. Uh, last Sebastian up, would have gone somewhere with that. Yes. Yes. I, I was about to. I'm just. I stopped. I stopped myself. See. Stop. You. You have that filter that he does not. Hence, which that's is why. why see, which is why we love having on you on radio. the show here. That's why. That's why he's on TV all the time because he's funny. He goes for it. He says in the toilet on television. <laughs> the um, ball and, is in the toilet. And Andrew, what are you watching here for the rest of the week? You know what? I'm I'm bending a little toward the two saw um, idea. You know, not uh, I'm not like say straddle action, but more like kind of ratio spreading action. See if anything happens. Uh, and I oh, I'm finding the euro movement interesting. As in, why does it keep bouncing around up down two bucks every couple of days? So I actually and I think uh, that short term volner is kind of cheap. So. I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at that, uh, um, and maybe like some kind of weekly strangle on there or something like that. But that's, I mean, that's, I have a couple things in place. I mean, I'll kind of have like, uh, you know, long flies and gold and stuff like just like small trades. There's nothing really, there's nothing super exciting. I'm not even short any, uh, I'm not short any, uh, volatility either really. So just no, you're not really doing any stuff. There's not, there's just not a whole lot <laughs> of stuff. There's no stuff to, to do. do. <laughs> that's my, that's my dilemma as well. And you know, don't force it when it's not there. Perhaps just a good day to keep the powder dry, go home, play with the kids, and all is right with the world. You'll get them next week. <laughs> there's right. always another day. It's yes. good thing about trading. There's always tomorrow. There's always another <laughs> phantom put spread lurking on the horizon to tease there you. Is. <laughs> there Siren is. Siren song of the phantom put spread. I think we'll leave you with that today, dear listener. But before we go, <clears throat> I do want to indeed thank all of you who've checked out our new uh, redesign over at the Options Insider, a new functionality. All of you have been banging on our comment system. We love it. Dive in. If you, if you like the show, if you don't like the show, if you can't stand Andrew, let us know. Post it on the comment board. <laughs> or you can do a lot of other... Especially if you don't yes. like me. I want to know Exactly. Because I exactly. want to find out where you live. Some grooming tips for Andrew. Whatever you want to send in, by all means. We'll, we'll <laughs> read them on the show here. But a lot of you have been I'll using Twitter. Them. Twitter at Options, at Facebook at Options Insider. A lot of ways to get in touch with us. Questions at the Options Insider. You can shoot us an email. A lot of ways for you to get in touch with us. So go ahead, check out the comment system. Check out the new revamped site with all of that good stuff on there, including that Option Block landing page. A lot of fun stuff for you to check out over at theoptionsinsider.com. And uh, speaking of things to check out, Uncle Mike, how goes the webinar choo-choo? Is it pulling into a station near you anytime soon? October 2nd, we have Mark Sebastian coming on at 8.30 Central Time with an intro to weekly options. Uh, the following week on the night of October 9th, uh, we have Price Headley coming on to do adjustments to how he adjusts to the Condor. And we have several other people in the wings right now. Uh, but Tuesday night will be webinar night at Know Your Options starting in October. We are excited. I've heard of that Price guy, but the other one, Sebast something, Sebastopol, I, I don't know him. But I think I've he, heard, he, I've heard some bad things. Though. Sandwich. Okay. Okay. Yes. Now I think I know who you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, what is coming up in the land of Options Express? We we would like to invite again all the listeners, uh, Options Express clients, or people interested in being Options Express clients, to log on to OptionsExpress.com anytime you have about three minutes. Open an account for free. And and look at all the different webinars that will go through the platform, different type of trading strategies, option spreads, futures, short calls, you name it. We have multiple webinars each day, sometimes a few a day, that fit your schedule. And some of these webinars are 9, 10 o'clock at night for the working man. So, again, you can open an account at optionspress.com, hit the education center. We are not the type of platform that's going to, uh, sorry, platform brokerage firm that's going to hassle you, ask you when you're going to fund. You can fund at your own time. But we highly stress education before you even begin trading. We want you to learn the website and all the tools we have first before getting to work. Yeah, I encourage you to check it out. You can actually can do some interesting stuff without even having to uh, 
to open an account. Of course, I'm always pushing for more pre-login, get some people to the website and check it out. Uh, try before you buy, but by all means, surf on over to optionsexpress.com. You can check out all those webinars for yourself and a lot of other interesting things, including going forward, some more interesting stuff going on with the old Option Block program. And last but certainly not least, the man from Maine, in between my massive mouthfuls of lobster. What is going on over there in the land of the pit, Andrew? I know it's funny. I mean, we are doing a lobster feast this weekend. Um, three bucks a pound. What are you going to do? Poor lobster. You almost can't not that. buy it at that price. No, it's cheaper than a Big Mac. Okay? There is something sick and wrong that I can go in and get a lobster It's less than a Big Mac. Big Mac meal lobster. Mm, tough choice. Tough choice. You can run your car on lobster oil and you're all you set. Get. How many, okay. How many times a month are you actually eating lobster, Andrew? A couple. A couple, two, and three. And I'd probably eat it more if it is a process because you got to kind of, you got to boil it, you know, and then on the front porch we just throw out the... Uh, you know, the white uh, tablecloth and the wife makes like some tarragon butter and stuff. It's pretty darn tasty. So, you know, what am I going to do? It's pretty are good. You, are you eating it the same way or sometimes? Uh, well, it's several, we, you know, we make our own lobster rolls or we grill it or steam. So those are the three big ways. We also do uh, a lobster with uh, like a lobster pasta dish as well. So, you know, it depends. But right so, now, so I mean, join the boys it, over at Option Pit for their lobster cooking and pasta seminar coming up soon. Yeah, uh, we might. Uh, you look at you loathe. Oh, you loathe lobster. <laughs> you know what? It's because you have to eat those stinky Chicago lobsters. That's why. Although the ones at uh, Gibson's, I would say, was always were always quite tasty, along with the the cool beverages that they serve with them. Indeed. So, what is coming up in the land of the pit, sir? Uh, well, Mark's going to be at KYO. In October. Um, oh, that's I that Sebastopol guy. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Our October class is full. Gold class is full, I think. I think we have one spot left. November's almost full. I guess everybody's giving them to their uh, families for that options education stuff. Never gets old. And again, we're revamping the silver course, which probably we say is the best intro option course there is. Of course, we say that because it's ours. Uh, but it is pretty darn good. It gets good reviews. And that's, you know, that's really about, I think that's it. Unless Mark knows something that I don't. But, you know, there's always several things going on in that head that I don't know about. I often know many things that you do not, sir. But in this case, I am ignorant of your upcoming schedule. But, of course, I should also remind our listeners that uh, you're not referring, of course, to your precious metal seminars, but indeed your, your basic and intermediate and advanced level seminars, the gold and the silver. And I believe there is a... Uh, uh, a platinum, a rubinium course there as well. Oop, I've got Options Express running in the background. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're pulling up your website, Sean. It gives me a, 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 a on-demand video. The right, rubinium uh, course is coming. Yes. We haven't quite figured out what we're going <laughs> to... Or perhaps yeah, deuterium. Sil silver, gold, and platinum, those are, the big, those are the big three that get people from basically beginning intermediate and advanced and if you don't know how to trade an option after that you will you should just take your money and go do something else with it give it to Tucson <laughs> yes that's a good plan <laughs> all right and with that word of wisdom we're going to close out this episode of the option block but before we go all of us here on the old all-star panel want to thank all of you out there in the listening audience for downloading and streaming and subscribing and indeed commenting and tweeting and facebooking on the old show and making it such a success and we'll see you next week right here on the option block Become a part of the Option Block. Just visit www.theoptionsinsider.com slash forum to post a question for the hosts. You can also submit questions to twitter.com slash option block or leave a voicemail at 312-544-9356. Make it interesting and your question just might make it on the air. The Options Block is property of the Options Insider Incorporated. All rights reserved.
preceding program was a presentation of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com radio or search for Options Insider Radio in iTunes.